Hey, it's Zeke and Kevin. We just finished watching a thing, and we're going to talk about the thing, and you're going to listen to it whether you want to or not. We have so many thoughts about this particular thing that we are going to mainline them directly into your ear holes in this video. We are strangers on the internet. Our opinions are more important than anything in your life. As is tradition on the internet. We deserve both your attention, your money, and your love. Mostly your money, but the other two are fine too. That's true. <laughs> in varying in varying amounts. And you can actually make up for one with a deficit. Like if you don't really love us, you can make up for it with more money. But if you don't get a you lot of money, you money, can yeah. just you can just give us some sweet loving instead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's flexible. Yeah. Uh, D DM me for details on how you can give me money. Anyway, we're gonna talk about uh, Sky Pilgrim takes off, uh, and let's let's get f first of all spoilers for everything, obviously. Um, yeah, spoilers for the movie, spoilers for the comics, spoilers for the show, everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, spoilers for uh, the game. It's really hard. That's your one spoiler. Okay, bye. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, spoilers for everything. So just b be aware of that. Um, yeah. And let's get the most obvious thing uh, out of the way. This 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 experience has been a bit of a roller a bit of a roller coaster ride because uh, Kevin might remember because it was only a few days ago. I was determined to not like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was I nothing I heard was giving me confidence after like the initial reveal. The initial reveal was awesome, obviously. Um, but everything oh, yeah, after yeah. that was not giving me confidence. Um, but then when I watched it. My confidence was immediately regained because this is not at all what we thought it was. No, yeah. Um, probably the thing that really sticks out about this uh, to me is that it's not really an adaptation of Scott Pilgrim. At all. Uh, this is this is more so a companion piece to the book, to the comics and the movie. It hinges heavily on the fact that you've seen seen or experienced one or both. Yeah. Um, and it builds upon that with a very heavily metatextual themed story. Um. Yes. I quite like it. I like it. I like it. I have it some at... complicated thoughts. As soon as that reveal <laughs> happened, uh, it was a great reveal and a great setup. Uh, oh, yeah. And I, I liked where it was going after that fact. Once I got it out of my head that this is not uh, not actually an ad uh, a, a do-over, an adaptation of the comics again, which in itself... I'll, I will quickly admit, is a little bit disappointing just given the the circumstances, you know? Yeah. Th this was their shot, you know? Whether we wanted it or not, they got all the cast back, they got all the fucking... They got Edgar Wright, they got, um, they got a studio in Science Saru that really understands O'Malley's current art style. And, like, just... And that's the one and thing... They got Anamon, and they got yeah. Anamanaguchi back for the music. That's true. Um, and I just want to... Just speaking to the production really quick, because I just want to get it out of the way, uh, in a bit of a compliment sandwich, I suppose. Uh, the actual production of this is great. It's fantastic. Oh, um, this oh this show is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Yes, it, um, it perfectly it perfectly uh, matches O'Malley's current art style, uh, and a lot of the stylistic uh, things we've come to expect from the series in this new animated form. And the actual production is fantastic. And if you actually prefer uh, some, and if you actually prefer O'Malley's older style, there are actually flashbacks with uh, Ramona that sh that are done in a style reminiscent of his old art. Yes, um, yes, that is that is that is also true, which is a nice touch. Uh, yeah, I so love that. Just keep that. I, I have a habit of um, accentuating the negative when I talk about things, especially fresh. Uh, oh, so yeah. I want to yeah. I want to get some positives out of the way first, which is that the actual. Uh, animation and stylization and sound design and all that is phenomenal. It's it's about as good as you could ever expect an animated Scott Pilgrim thing to be. Um, oh yeah, and like uh, this is visually speaking, this is the ideal Scott Pilgrim anime in my head in terms of visuals. Yeah, which makes it a little disappointing that it's not a readaptation. Um, that yeah. that is going to be a hurdle for some people to get over. Uh, it's not that, and you know what? I, I, I was, re I was reticent at first, but like, I get it. I, I, I get it. I'm, O'Malley, he's getting old. He doesn't want to do the f same fucking story three times in a row. I understand this, you know. Yeah. And I think, I, just setting, just setting some things up for larger conversations. 
I think that the first big thing that takes off really asks of the viewer is is was was another adaptation like that even something we wanted for a sense of completeness because the comic is right there it's not going anywhere that's true a and is it 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 would when i when i thought about it after the first episode i thought to myself you know in hindsight it would be unfair to get all of these creative people together you know to bring the whole band back together or whatever and then just do the same shit they already did you effectively know. do the same thing because like when yeah. you actually look at the when you when you actually look at the movie uh and the way that it actually adapts the comics i would say six like three-fifths of that movie is actually pretty accurate to the comics yeah um it does diverge pretty heavily especially in the third act but mostly it adapts a lot of stuff from the comics very very closely so i do understand the hesitation and the lack of interest in that regard i understand lack of interest in wanting to just do a straight adaptation of the comics but you know adding a few things here and there to kind of spice things up yeah. i kind of get that no um, i understand why this this product exists in the way it does and i think um but, but i just want to i want to get that out of the way that it is a bit of a shame now that that's out of the way let's talk about what takes off actually is um yeah so Something that is immediately apparent about Takes Off from just the first few episodes is that it's mostly focused on being a story... It is a story mostly focused around Ramona, yes. first and foremost, compared to Scott in the original comics, which um, I found that very fascinating, mm -hmm. uh, the way that they went about that. Something I really liked in the first like six episodes of this show was actually how it took Ramona and her evil exes and... It actually explores the past that she has with them a lot more. Um, and it kind of gives closure, more emotional closure to a few of these characters. Roxy probably being the big one in episode three. Yeah. Um, a lot of this stuff was alluded to in the comics, and um, but not like explored and definitely cut out of the film and for most of, uh, for most of them. Uh, yeah, and there, and are, there are some new details here for sure, though. Yeah. To be fair, though, the reason why they did that is because the original story in the comics and movie is a story centered around Scott and his love life with Ramona. I understand. Him having to, you, you know, know you don't gotta fight all that off. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, there's... So, like, it makes sense why it wasn't really focused on. So, I actually do heavily appreciate that a lot of that stuff is given more time to breathe and develop here. Yes. Um... And we even get some, like, very interesting new uh, character dynamics. Um. <laughs> yes. I, I would actually argue that uh, the evil exes are actually the real star here. Um, they really are. Instead of Scott and his entourage from the from the comics, who take kind of a backseat to a lot of the uh, proceedings. Yeah. Which gives this, uh, which gives this series a very interesting uh, strength in that the the exes in the original, ser in the original works were not really explored terribly well uh a lot of them were the comics explored them better than the movie but broadly yeah. speaking uh they were mostly just antagonists for scott to fight mm -hmm. that had a pass with ramona um here a lot of more of that is explored we actually get to see the league kind of inter more, interact with each other a lot more and yes. we get to see more of like interpersonal dynamics between them and even outside of the league Probably my favorite one is uh, Todd Ingram getting a gay crush on Wallace Wells. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking that was Wallace. fucking great. Fucking Wallace. Um, Wallace, still the best character. <laughs> yes. I realized that the only thing better than being me was being paid to be me. I to mean, be me. <laughs> why be Wallace Wells for free? <laughs> that is... <laughs> I, I love that line. That's like my favorite line in the whole fucking show. <laughs> Yeah. Um yes. No, I I definitely enjoyed uh the alternative take and I enjoyed um I I enjoyed uh, especially in episode 2 the the meeting of the league uh where you actually get to see the behind the scenes of the league which was not really shown at all in the in either adaptation beforehand um either telling yep. rather um, yeah, that's that's interesting. You actually do get to see more of like the hierarchy of the league and how they, you know, actually operate as a unit. It's kind of just a vague thing in the original material. Yeah, here you really get to see them in all of their fucking Power Rangers villain glory. 
Um, and it's it's glorious. Yeah, it it is it is very fun, and it's very it's very like the first. Uh, well, I mean, the whole thing is kind of designed to fuck with you if you've read the comics, but like, oh yeah, you know, just the second episode, we're already getting uh, Patel getting a huge confidence boost from quote unquote killing Scott Pilgrim and going on to dethrone Gideon, is um, quite 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 the quite the jaw dropper sequence, honestly. I'm um, I, I'm stunned at how much I enjoyed Matthew Patel in this. Yes, really. Yeah, because he was easy, he was easily the most shallow of the X's in the original. Here he's one of the most developed. Yes, they kind of, um, in my mind, I they kind of, like, Jack Spicer'd him a little um, by uh, taking, like, the throwaway loser villain of the original cast and uh, portraying him as um, significantly more confident and competent than he was in the original. Uh, reminds me of, yeah. like, the, reminds me of, like, alternate futures in Jalen Showdown where Jack Spicer, like, defeats all the other villains and, like, becomes the biggest one. It kind of reminded me of that. Um, yeah, it's got a bit of that energy. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty great, and I liked the uh, alternate dynamics at play, um, sort of uh, with with Ramona's um, quest to uh, discover what happened to Scott, and uh, sort of you know you get a, you get to see different sides of things than you do from how the story normally goes, which is definitely interesting i don't i'm not gonna say all of it was executed well there's definitely i think there's one the one one of the things that holds it back a bit is the fact that there's a lot of assumptions baked into the proceedings um certain developments just kind of get kind of brushed over or done very quickly just because <coughs> you know we already saw it and it just needs to happen for this plot to function or um some things yeah. just get dropped entirely to facilitate this new plot um uh, like as funny as funny as it is, and it is fucking funny. Like everybody gets over Scott's death very easily. <laughs> they um, do, yeah. Like like we literally have a funeral procession in episode two that gets hijacked by Envy Adams, and no one cares. <laughs> I like how they threw the coins in the coffin. That's very so, funny. That's such a good visual gag. I love it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, and there's definitely, I think there are some characters, uh, that def that definitely get to shine here, the X's especially, but also, uh, characters that were fairly minor in the comics, like Young Neil. Young Neil is hilarious in this. Oh, um, God, <laughs> fucking damn it. <laughs> what happens when you mix two volatile chemicals? They explode. What? They explode? Why are we mixing volatile <laughs> chemicals on a film set? <laughs> The creative process is a mystery. It's a mystery. I, I, don't, I don't even remember writing. I, 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 don't, I don't even remember writing it. I, no, I like I like when Todd starts make when Wallace starts making out with Todd and Young Neil is like I don't remember writing that. I'm like you don't remember writing any of it. What do you mean that part? He's like I don't remember writing that part. You don't remember writing any part. You fucking dumbass. I fucking Young Neil just being the dumbest motherfucker in the room is so good. Yeah, it's very fun. Like. Uh, look, I, I, I will be, I will be the, I, well, maybe not the first, but I will be one of the loudest voices to say this. I think the cast has kind of flanderized from the comics, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. I think with Young Neil it absolutely works. Uh, 100%. This, this, this fucking idiot is a joy every single time. Yeah, the problem with Young Neil in the comics, and especially in the movie, is that he, he's kind of just... A character who blends into the background for the most part he does have you know interpersonal relationships but his personality is just so <laughs> understated and airheaded in the other material that it doesn't really it's played up here well. right? and I, I, I oh I, it's mega played up to, to facilitate other things and i really like that um oh yeah yes and i like the i like the exploration of the x's one of the running themes of the comics is that the exes were their own people with their own lives separate from Ramona that were spurned by her and whatnot, uh, which was uh, sometimes shown and sometimes just more implied, but here is definitely the the primary focus. Oh, it's center stage here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is interesting. It's an interesting role reversal. And that aspect of it, I appreciate. In fact, I would say... That like after the tw after the first big twist at the end of the first episode and into the preceding episodes, 
I was actually having a really good time. I really, I really, I enjoyed the meta commentary, the sort of, um, you're already going to get a bunch of fucking think pieces and like Reddit comments and shit being like, well, this is really a deconstruction looking back at the legacy of the, of the series. And I'm like, right. That's, yeah, no. <laughs> that's half true and half not true. Um, I will get to that, but like, as far as the meta commentary goes of the making of the, of the movie and like the creative uh, process and the and the telling of the story and whatnot, that stuff in the in the middle is all is all fine. It, it's like it's it's fun. I enjoyed the subversions and I enjoyed the so okay. So one of the things that I told I, I I harped on a lot before this premiered was that I was I was convinced I was convinced they were going to change the knives situation, and I like for the most part I like how they handled it. They did not change it. It is the exact yeah. same, with only a little light jabbing here and there at the, um, the, the like dis right near the end, yeah. The, well, 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 okay. So one of my favorite jokes is Lucas Lee getting canceled for dating an actress who played a yeah. high schooler, which feels like a nice. A nice knee jab at uh, at like that whole fucking the, the, the at, at the idea of canceling a fictional character. But she's thirty one in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah, that felt like a nice, light hearted jab at the notion of canceling a fictional character. Where they're like, yeah, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like get a lot of this shit. <laughs> yeah, it was kept basically the same, and like the only two times they even like sort of. A, I, I don't want to say addressed because it gives too much validation to this crowd, but I'm going to... There's no better word to use. Addressed was that joke, which is really funny. And then later, uh, when Scott goes through his apology, it's like, you know, I really shouldn't have been dating in the first place. Apparently, a 23-year-old dating a high schooler is frowned upon by society. <laughs> <laughs> that was admittedly a really funny line. <laughs> and I'm like... Fine. Okay, you get that. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Fine, it's fine. true. If you're going to address, so, yeah. if, if they were going to address it all, I would, I would rather they do it in this fucking jokey ass fucking yeah yeah whatever way than actually like make a deal of it. I'm glad they didn't yeah. make a deal of it. Is my thing. Um, and there's there's other little things like that. Um, that I uh, <laughs> appreciate. I like I like the in jokes. You know. The multiple times they reference how Lucas Lee's defeat in the comics was fucking silly. Um, <laughs> yeah, he tricked to be he tricked to be into grinding to death, grinding to death, bro. I wouldn't do that. Who does that? <laughs> what idiot would do that? <laughs> you know, I I you know I appreciate things like that. Like I I was having a really uh, fun time with it, and I, like around episode six or so, I would say that I was very much enjoying this as sort of a meta companion piece alternate route the fucking you know as i, I uh the, the fucking ubw to the comics fate route or whatever you know or, yeah. or the, the the rebuild of scott pilgrim whatever you want to call it uh i i was really enjoying it and then the last two episodes happened mm, yeah, and I'm that's, a bit more mixed on the last two episodes <laughs> that's where my mixed thoughts come in mm -hmm. because um I think the I think the concepts are solid. It's the execution I'm very mixed on. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll let you talk if you want to say some stuff, but. Uh... No, yeah, my opinion on the last two episodes. So, like, I'm pretty much with you. I loved the first six episodes pretty, pretty heavily. I, I loved everything that they did with the X's and and developing Ramona more. Yeah. Um. My problem really comes in when it starts to get super heavy with the meta commentary with uh, old Scott uh, becoming uh, kind of this like jilted, broken dude who feels like he's uh, kind of ruined his love life with Ramona and he tries to prevent Scott from ever getting together with her. He affect he, um, he old uh, future Scott effectively becomes the eighth evil X, uh, which is something the comics like sort of played around with the idea of, but then ultimately, you know, didn't do because, uh, you know, Scott confronted his past, Nega Scott, you know, character development all around, defeat Gideon, yeah. yada yada. You know, th this, so, the, I don't think it's necessarily a problem to have this sort of stealth sequel approach 
Uh, yeah. This idea of future Scott, the idea that their future relationship had complications beyond the happy ending of the comics. I don't have a problem with any of that on paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't like the way it was executed for a number of reasons. And I think the main thing for me is that it's really hard to it's really hard to get a grasp of future Scott and future Ramona and all their baggage because what led to their fallout is entirely vague and it's vague a little self-contradictory and played off really jokey uh, which does fit with the vibe i guess and it does fit with some of the greater themes you know relationships do do be like that they're messy like that um, yeah. and maybe it was somewhat intentional because I feel maybe they felt like if they gave us too many details, we'd start picking sides, you know, we'd start fucking, am I the assholing this? And that's not really what they wanted to do, but I feel like we needed something more concrete to grasp onto because there's a lot of the, the, the climax is going for something really cathartic and, um, it's trying to inv evoke catharsis, but like, I'm a little lost on the plot. Like I, yeah. I don't think it was a, I don't think it was established well enough, and I, it's not that I don't think they had the time to do it. I think they just used their time poorly, or just were too busy making admittedly funny jokes. You know, um, the, the the bit where they set it up so you think uh, Future Scott is Wallace's husband, and he just goes, "His husband works at Nintendo." Works at Nintendo. <laughs> Great joke. Great joke. <laughs> ten out of ten joke. But again, we should be kind of. If we're going to move into the serious deconstructionary, looking back at our legacy sort of material here, we should probably do that. Instead, it is, you know, extremely vague and jokey. And it makes the final yeah, climax a little bit hard to invest in. Now, I now on one hand, I get what they're trying to do here. Like, kind of the whole point that is explored here is that Old Scott is trying not to think about, you know, what happened with him and Ramona after they got married because of, because it's all because like it's all rough to him. He doesn't view it as like you know good memories anymore. So he try so he deliberately tries to gloss over it, which that's fine. That's understandable. That's you know part of the character. Yeah, yeah. My problem is that. Future Ramona also glosses over it later on when she comes in right at the end and, you know, gives Scott this big reason you suck speech to him. And she, all she all she really says is that it was a rough patch and you and you quit the entire thing. Like, we don't know what the rough patch was, what actually caused the rip between them, yeah. and why they needed space in the first place. Like, but, it's, but it's also, it's, yeah, like, it it's trying to echo their character flaws originally with her running away again but scott misunderstanding it but like the thing the fact the, the, the thing of the matter is is that like trying to erase the relationship from history is such the way it's presented feels like such a comical overreaction because we have no context if you're gonna do if you're gonna go in that kind of direction if you're going to effectively make scott the eighth evil x we need a little bit of context like you don't have to be like it doesn't need to be super detailed but we need something to latch on to uh, but yeah. there's, there's just nothing given. It's just all vagaries. Um, yeah, it's like it's like Wallace. It, Wallace compares it to Scott being dumped by Envy, but ten times worse. But again, we don't know what Ramona did, yeah, or what Scott did, or what, what anybody did. Yeah, and that's really the issue that I have here. They're trying to get us to understand why Scott and Ramona, you know. They're trying to get us to, you know, kind of sympathize and kind of understand this, but it's yeah. difficult to understand this when you don't explain it and you just play everything off uh, with jokes and humor. Yes. I feel like they really should have given more time to exploring this future version of these characters and really showcasing what caused them to split. Yeah. We need... I understand the, the need to want to be vague because relationships are complicated and messy and if you give too many details people are going to try to nitpick it and take sides and yada 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 and i guess that that's against the theme but we need some context to latch onto to make the climax hit you know yeah and the other problem i have with it is the fact that i don't think it narratively or creatively earns its position as a pseudo stealth sequel because ultimately we come to about the same thematic conclusions that the comics do just in a more messy convoluted way you know i don't feel i don't feel like uh, scott pilgrim takes off says anything truly new that the comic didn't already um and that's that's a huge mark against it for something that's trying to be as ambitious as this 
Um, yeah. Because I just don't feel like... I, I walked away disappointed because I just didn't feel like... I liked the concept and I liked the idea of doing something like this with these characters um, in this series. But, like, I just... I don't think the execution was up to par. And I don't think it narratively justified itself. Um, you know, I... If they did it, if he, if if they did it right, I would have been totally on board with this. But I just think it was too vague. It was too undercooked. Um, and ultimately, the uh, we reached the same thematic beats we did in the comics, just in a more rushed, convoluted fashion. And it just didn't hit like it was probably intended to. Yeah, there are some diff. There now, admittedly, there are some like differences. Uh, by the end in terms of like some of the characters uh, relationships and how they've and where they've ended up in the uh, friend groups I guess but sure. broadly speaking it is a rough it is a very similar ending to the comics in terms of how everything kind of shakes out um, yeah I, and... I, I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna make if you're gonna at least play at the idea of it being a stealth sequel you have to add something to the thesis and I feel like takes off doesn't really do that it just comes across like a somewhat sloppy rehash and it, it's most of the journey is fun but when you get to the actual like part where we're supposed to have a point it's a very dull point if any point yeah like ultimately the whole point that, that it kind of comes to is the exact same point as the original which is relationships are complicated and there's going to be rough patches but you have to work through that shit in order to actually have a good relationship yeah, self, which we yeah, already you know, fucking knew that yeah you know self, self respect understanding yada 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 you know yeah except and, now ramona learns it not scott Ooh. but she did in the comics as well as this was yeah, yeah. Uh, this was underplayed a bit in the film but in the comics that was absolutely still the case yeah, um, yeah. and i find this but I find this iteration of it less compelling than the original, and it doesn't say anything different. So, uh, as fun as a lot of the journey was, and as much as I liked seeing these characters in these wacky new scenarios again, and as much as they expanded on certain things like the X's, ultimately, I it feels a little hollow to me. Um, mm -hmm. Because the execution of the greater point of it all just felt lacking. Um, like, the, the, the entire last two episodes feel cobbled feel kind of cobbled and like it just was undercooked um and that does, that goes beyond scott and ramona and it goes to uh certain things that i uh either are examples of flanderization or just like things that are, are you have to brush aside to make this timeline work um like gideon is super underplayed here like now admittedly him getting defeated by patel and falling uh from grace and whatnot is really funny considering he was the big bad of the of the yeah. um, main continuity but there's he goes through this like quasi sort of hazy ass fucking Frieza and super style quasi redemption kind of um, and it feels super underbaked but it also requires you to forget a lot of things or just assume they don't happen in this kind like in the comics he literally has like six girls just like frozen like in his in like his his uh his fucking building, you know. Yeah. Like, he literally keeps his ex his own exes like frozen in time stasis or whatever, and like all that is like not addressed. Like, like yes, they 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 make a point that Gideon Graves, you know, is villainous. He formed the league. He did all these evil things. He wants revenge. Yada yada yada. But like, there are other things about him that either have to be glossed over. I don't know if that's true of this Gideon or not. Um. But, like, we're not giving reason to assume it's not. So, yeah, like, most, it, fe it yeah, feels a little... Yeah. It feels it feels undercooked. It feels like there's a lot of things that should be addressed that just aren't. And the things that are addressed are addressed really quickly. Um, like, um... Like, uh, w one example for me is when Scott comes back to the to the present and he, he apologizes to Knives. We're effectively bum-rushing several novels worth of background development in one conversation... And yeah. that's a great, that's a good example of what I mean when I say the characters feel flanderized and everything feels a bit rushed. And I understand to some extent that's inevitable given the setup, but yeah. I, I've seen this point, I've seen this point being brought up in comments uh, where I think the thing that this, that by the end of the series it needed to justify that it didn't justify is why wasn't this just a sequel? Um, yeah. Why do they have like, to go through this route of sort of doing a quasi rebuild time travel loop instead of it just being a sequel you know i feel like the whole thing of them 
I, I think the whole thing about this sh this show heavily hinging itself on the fact that you've experienced a previous version of Scott Pilgrim before is both a blessing and a curse. Yeah. I feel like on the blessing side of things, it allowed for them to develop Romona and her axes a lot better. It allowed for new situations. It allowed for uh, new uh, exploration of different characters, new comedy. What? Sorry, I forgot to loop the music. Go on. Okay. Like, it allowed for a lot more... It allowed for a lot more of that. But on the opposite end of, end of things, because it assumes you've already experienced the story in some regard before, it deliberately flanderizes or it drops uh, development for a lot of characters in a, in that really should still be in the story if you want it to, you know, still feel, you know, impactful. Uh, authentic to the in-universe, like... Uh, inertia, I suppose. Uh, yeah. It feels weirdly fanfic in that way. Um, yeah, Knives is Knives is barely a character here, yeah. which is something that I actually did not like very much about this, uh, just how little Knives actually plays into the story. It feels like when she actually gets her Knives and her battle outfit in the final episode, it feels more like a I clapped when I saw it thing yeah. than something that was actually oh, just, properly I th I built think, up. In I think just the fact that, like, everyone's the everyone's here aspect of the climax was itself yeah. sort of like clapped when i saw it sort of thing like oh everyone's here the gang's yeah, all they're here they're doing the thing they're doing the thing the gang's all here just like at the end of the comics the gang was all there except there it made sense um there're also there're also a couple of gags throughout this that feel like haha yeah yeah because the movie did it like like scott and ramona about to go into the final battle against uh, future scott and he's like wait hold on ties his shoe yeah yeah, yeah, that absolutely... I mean, like, yeah, I, I chuckle in the moment, but it's another example of just... Haha, look at us, we've done this before. Um, yeah, yeah. And, like, it's... Okay, so, like, it's a, it's a fun ride on the whole, but I just feel like, narratively, it kind of failed to justify itself in what it was trying to do. And... Yeah. In, in, in the end... I like I, I I'm left with mixed feelings. I'm left with sort of well, that was just kind of okay, you know. It had its yeah. it had its good points. Fine. It had its bad points. It was just kind of whatever. Um, and you know, and admittedly, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I said this to you earlier, but I'm gonna say it for posterity, uh, in case other fans watch this. Uh, which if you are, hello, please subscribe. Uh, Hi. <laughs> um, but like, there's enough differences in the timeline pre-divergence in episode one that you this uh the future scott has a very similar timeline to the comics but it's clearly not exactly the same because of many differences presented before the divergence point in episode one uh such as uh amazon getting swapped out for netflix crash and the boys breaking up before the show uh, or splitting into just crash and uh, most notably to me, anyway, the explanation for how Scott came living with to came uh, came to live with Wallace is completely different. In the comics, they it was he legitimately moved in. They signed the lease together. They even have to ne renegotiate their lease later on in the comic, in like volume four, I think. Um, whereas uh, in the show, it stated that Scott came over for a night and just didn't leave. Uh, so yeah. you don't have to. Where, are you reaching for something? No. Yeah. Sorry. I had to okay. check something. All right. Uh, so. They, they kind of have that out there where you don't have to see future Scott as comic Scott if you don't want to. If you if you want to see comic Scott as having the ending that you thought he did, then you can just go ahead right thinking that. And they kind of allow for that, um, if not enforce it. Um, because future Scott's backstory is more comic inspired, but clearly a little bit broad strokes. Um, so they do, they do have that kind of out, I suppose. Uh, and I do appreciate that um, but it does kind of come across, it, it feels like it only necessary because of how non-committal a lot of the thematic endpoints feel. Um, and also there's yeah. a, also there's like a weird after credits teaser. What's that? Is that just a joke? What's happening? Yeah, I don't know what, the, yeah, I do not, that, I, I, I don't like the after credits teaser. I really don't. Because, like, the, the whole thing here is that, like, why? Why is Why is Julie doing this? Why is Julie deciding? I mean, Julie's to become... always. I mean, Julie's always been a bitch, but like here, she's I more mean, a bitch, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's that's another element. That's another element that like is kind of flanderized with her character is that she's actually more bitchy here than she was in the previous versions of the story. Yeah, if and, I... she, and she's and she and she thinks you know and she thinks Gideon's or Gordon, I guess. Yeah. Uh, his evilness is like super hot. 
I don't um, I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I just think like the yeah. the post credits teaser is weird. Like I think I think it, it it might be leaving the door open, but like it's also I don't know if I want to see more of this timeline is the problem. Um you know Yeah, yeah. It felt like we had our shot to do something meaningful and we kind of sort of did, but not really. Um and so it just comes across as yet another weird undercooked thing about the uh about the finale. And if I had to guess the reason why it takes off is like this, why it's this whole reimagining, why it's this whole alternate perspective, why it does all the things it does, I think it's because we know for a fact that the film crew and cast were very tight knit after after the movie concluded and, you know, they had an email chain, like they always you know, everyone loved working on it and they loved the material and whatnot. And I feel like this show was structured in such a way and sort of molded in such a way so that everyone kind of got a little bit more time to shine because if they did a, if they did a, yeah. a strict retelling some of them wouldn't be in it very much um and this felt like a story that was kind of molded to be sort of a more a slightly more egalitarian thing and gonna give a lot of people who would have had very limited screen time otherwise a bit more time and like everything's a bit more spread out and everyone gets a little moment to shine and like it, it's a big old fun reunion for the cast but i'm not sure every decision made in facilitating that translated to a story worth telling in the way they did like i like i said i feel like there are a lot of valid ideas here and a lot of valid progressions for these characters but it feels like it might have been better served in an actual direct sequel rather than this setup that they chose. Yeah, because ultimately it just feels like a bunch of half measures taken to kind of create a new story within the Scott Pilgrim universe, but not actually commit to, you know, doing a direct follow-up, but it's also not, you know, committing to doing, you know, a full remake of the original. It's like, it's taking like a half step on every single element, mm -hmm. and sometimes it works, but sometimes it really doesn't. Yeah, I, I heard some... There were some comments I read where they said, a lot of the developments in the last two episodes in particular, this feels like ideas for, like, a season two or three of a show that doesn't exist. Um, it does, yeah. Yeah. I feel like... I feel like if you had way more time to... to again, this really just comes down to the fact that the last two episodes feel very rushed and half-baked due mm -hmm. to uh, some pacing issues and focus more so on comedy than, you know, drama and character building. Yeah. Um, because you end up with the these last two episodes kind of speed running all of the major points that it's trying to make. Yeah. And I feel like it would have been a lot better if, honestly, even if you had like <laughs> two or even four more episodes, this would have been much more like... Uh, Again, I don't know if they needed more episodes. I think they just needed to use their time better. And right... Probably, yeah. There were select scenes and bits that just needed to be more clear, or have a more concrete vision behind them. It feels it feels wishy washy. Like the ending thematic beats, yeah. the the deconstruction, I suppose. Um, it, it it feels half baked. It feels uh, undercooked. It just it doesn't feel fleshed out enough. And I don't I don't think that's necessarily a time issue. I think it's just an execution issue. So I want to talk about that deconstruction. Yeah. I don't think this is a deconstruction. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I don't think it is, because it ultimately comes to the same conclusions as the original story, and it explores a lot of the same themes and ideas. It yeah. just does it in a different way, yeah. by focusing on Ramona and her exes as the main characters, rather than yeah. Scott. And but I love, I love how we're going to deal with articles, comments, and think pieces telling us it's a deconstruction for the, end, for the rest of time. That's really cool. Uh, I love yeah, this just shows that this just shows that nobody knows what the fuck the word deconstruction actually means. I wish O'Malley knew what it meant in this context. Oh God, is he one of the people who <laughs> says that it is? I don't know. I don't think so. But like, I okay. feel like I feel like he was kind of trying to go for that, but it just ended up in the same place in a, me a messier fashion. You know, like this does feel very rebuild of Ava ish. This does feel very revisiting an old thing with with a with a modern perspective sort of thing it does have a yeah. lot of those vibes to it but it either doesn't do it very well or it just doesn't commit to it um like okay so like putting a bow on it all fun time i like i i enjoyed most oh, of it yeah yeah and, but i just don't think it stuck the landing and i i like I, I think this is like a flat like like a seven out of ten for me. Like it's fine, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but like it's it, it's in that zone where like, 
like Arcade always says, ending is paramount, and I just don't think the ending was was it stuck the landing here, and that kind of sours my view on the the grand takes off experiment. Yeah, I as a as someone who you know experienced Scott Pilgrim at the time when you were supposed to experience it, you know, back in high school. Mm -hmm. um, back as someone who you know essentially grew up wa wa with 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 the Scott Pilgrim story, who grew up watching the movie and reading the comics, as somebody who's intimately familiar with the material and someone who's you know been wanting a new adaptation for a long time there's a lot of stuff here that i really like there's a lot of stuff here that i really enjoyed some stuff here i actually think are done somewhat better than the comics uh again the, the ramona and nexus thing sure but there's also a lot of stuff that i feel is uh ham is uh hampered by the fact that this is kind of a half sequel but also not an actual sequel because mm -hmm. it's not like in the same timeline as the comics but it's assuming you've already experienced the story in another fo form yeah but oh i mean like, also, like, like it is if you want it to be but it's also not if you don't want it to be wink wink um you know yeah I, that that's probably the thing that frustrates me most about this entire experience is the fact that i don't know what it's exactly trying to be by the end of it yeah i it's like, just it just kind of leaves me confused i don't know like I said, I don't think Takes Off says anything the comic didn't, and if it does, it doesn't say it well. Um, yeah. And that's that's kind of my that's kind of my final word on it. I, yeah, yeah. I I will admit I preferred this to what I feared would happen, which is a botched rush retelling. You know, getting our grand do over adaptation and it being yet another thing that has to make cuts and rushes. You know, and not actually give me the adaptation i want i'm glad it's not that oh I'm, yeah like i am i am glad that we got what we got compared to what you know the alternative was yes yeah, so in <laughs> that respect better than i was anticipating but also i'm i'm a little disappointed and i think it's i think it's definitely gonna be one of those things that were the the ending is so unparamount here that it, it is going to sour my memory of it a bit over time you know, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, yeah. I I foresee myself seeing this worse than I currently do in the future. Um, and that's not going to be helped by the discourse of it. Like some, you know, I've already seen people uh, complain that this is going, whether it deserves it or not, whether it makes any sense or not, this is going to be the fucking last Jedi of Scott Pilgrim discourse, which oh, hell no. is <laughs> the most terrifying statement you could ever tell me. Uh, but I don't, I don't disbelieve that. Um, yeah. The only thing worse than the disappointment I feel right now is the disappointment of knowing the conversations I'm going to have with other people about it in the future. Yeah, yeah. Which I feel Especially... like, which I feel like could have been avoided with a, if if they just had a better vision for what they were doing. Agreed. Yeah, and that and that's not even getting into the whole like fucking screwed up. Uh discourse that surrounded Scott Pilgrim in the last few years anyway since it's gotten its, you know, second wind in pop culture, and I, I guess. And I appreciate that it does, I appreciate that Takes Off doesn't go out of its way to address or rectify any of that. It's perfectly fine existing oh, yeah. as as it is, and I, that's one of the things I was most afraid about, and I'm I, most afraid of, and I'm glad it didn't go that route. Um, that said, not gonna stop the discourse. There's also nothing to dissuade people. So we're gonna have the same arguments and also new stupid arguments and that shouldn't reflect on the work itself and i try not to let it reflect on the work itself but also the work itself could have also been better so i don't know it just all melds into a pot where i'm just kind of like it's okay like right. it's it's, it's fine like it's it, it, it's it's good it's a fine it's a fine companion piece should not be anyone's first scott pilgrim thing absolutely not um <laughs> I am scared for anybody who actually goes into this thinking that this is a good jumping oh, yeah. point. Because oh, yeah, that's yeah. another thing. This, this, it was not made explicitly clear that this is not a jumping on point. So there are going to be people where this is their first Scott Pilgrim mm -hmm. experience, and I oh, am boy. scared shitless that this is going to negatively impact their opinion on the rest of the franchise yes. as a whole. Yeah, this should, not, this should definitely be something you watch after the comics or at least after the movie preferably the comics but at least the movie um that's that's another thing when you actually watch the movie there isn't anything that they bring up from you know the the other timeline that isn't also in the movie it's very vague as to whether or not it's following up on the comics or the movie probably on purpose because they know there's going to be a sizable portion of the audience that 
didn't read the comics, so they can't allude to too many comic-specific things, like Lisa yeah. or Knives' dad or other things, you know. Uh, and then there's, there's some stuff that carries over, but just kind of by necessity, like the twins actually talking this time. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I unsure of it. I wish this had more time in the oven. I, w I wish some of these ideas were better thought out and they had more to say than they do. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But at this point, we're just repeating ourselves, so... Uh, that that Scott Pilgrim takes off. It's okay. It's fine. It's it's all right. I, I if, like if, it if, enough. If, if some if somebody finished the comics and said, "Should I watch Take Off?" I will be like, "Give it a shot, I guess." But I don't think it's required. You know, I don't think it's so good that you need to go out of your way to watch it. But I also don't think it's so bad that it'll ruin everything if you do. It's just kind of okay. And in yeah, some ways, in some ways, that's the worst feeling. But it is what it is. Yeah, it, it's it's strictly supplementary material. Take that as it is. But I feel like this could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot more, even with the ideas that they were trying to express here. Yeah, I feel I feel like they took way too many half measures, and it just kind of ended up causing everything to fall apart near the end. I agree, uh, and that's our thoughts on Scott Pilgrim takes off. Uh, we'll see you in the next video or podcast or whatever the fuck we do. Zeke freak out. Ciao, ciao for now.